Shalom, shalom everyone. It's been a while since I've done a video and I wanted to do a video that Yah gave me um, some inspiration to do. And I want to declare today that Jesus is Lord. Yes, he is Lord. Uh, no, for my family who have come out of paganism, out of religion, I have not lost my mind. Uh, but I am here to declare that Jesus is Lord, who is also by all, who is also Shaitan. So we're going to get into what all of this means in a minute. But I just wanted to give you what Yah gave me. So if you have your scriptures, I want you to turn to Barashith chapter 1. And we're going to read verse 3. Barashith chapter 1, verse 3. And it reads, And Elohim said, Let light come to be. And light came to be. And Elohim saw the light, that it was good. And Elohim separated the light from the darkness. Okay? So, Elohim, Yahuwah, separated the light from the darkness. And that light and darkness is what is controlling the world, okay? Light and darkness is what controls the world. Light, of course, is good and dark is evil, okay? That is what duality is all about, okay? The light and the darkness is what duality is all about. I have a picture that I want to show you, and I'm going to give you a little description of this picture. This here is Baphomet. This is Baphomet. I'm going to read you a little bit of information about Baphomet. So Baphomet appeared as a term for a pagan idol in trial transcripts of the Inquisition of the Knights Templar in the early 14th century. So the Knights Templar is nothing more than masonry, is nothing more than the Illuminati, so forth and so on. Okay, it was created by um, a gentleman named Eliphas Levi. This is his drawing of Baphomet. And if you notice, Baphomet has female breasts. It has male genitalia. Okay? The whole idea is to meld the two together. Okay? To create their sense of what creation should be. So they're taking what Yah created as good and they're melding it together as one. So they're, they're, they're using things that Yah created for good and they're creating evil out of that. Okay? So they're taking the two and melding it, melding it together as one. There's, there's a lot of uh, esoteric meaning in that. Okay? So if you know anything about the two twin towers that came down, and now they have one tower, okay, that's bringing together good and evil as one. That's what they're trying to do. That's what they're trying to say. Um, the idea of the duality is that it brings about a delusion. And what that means is if you are under the delusion, which is talked about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, you will not be able to understand that you are actually worshiping the dark side. Okay? So let's turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. And we're going to get some clarity um, as to what this delusion is and why people are under this delusion and why they can't break free from the delusion without the help of Yah. Okay, so 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and we're going to read verses 1 through 11. Okay. Okay. Give me a second here. So 
So again, while, while I'm finding this, the idea of duality is to meld together good and evil, okay? Up and down, you know, right and left. It is about um, bringing back what Yah separated, bringing back together when Yah separated light from darkness, it is bringing those things back together. Okay? So 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11 says, As for the coming of our master, Yahushua, Mashiach, and our gathering together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to, not to become easily unsettled in the mind or troubled either by the Ruach or by the word, or by the letter, as if from us, as if the Yom of Yahuwah has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, because the falling away is to come first, and the man of lawlessness is to be revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called Elohim, or that is worshipped, so that he sits as Yahuwah in the Mishkan of Yahuwah, showing himself that he is Yahuwah, uh, do not remember that I told you that while I was still with you, and now you know the restraints for him to be revealed in his time. For the secret of lawlessness is already at work. Only until he who, re who now restrains comes out of the mist, and then the lawless one shall be revealed, whom the master shall consume with the Ruach, of his mouth and bring to nothing with the manifestation of his coming. The appearing of the lawless one is by means of the working of Shaitan with all power and signs and wonders of falsehood. I want to start right there. That's number nine. All powers and signs and wonders of falsehood. So he is able to do things that look like light, but they're still darkness. Okay. And with all the seed of unrighteousness and those perishing because they did not receive the love of the truth in order for them to be delivered. Okay. And for this reason, Yahuwah sends them a working of delusion for them to believe the falsehood. And in order that all should be judged who did not receive the truth, but have delighted in lawlessness. Okay. So this duality, okay, this delusion, let's talk about the duality first. So the duality is that Shaitan is able to take darkness and mix it with some truth and make it look like light, okay? So he did that with his creation of Jesus. He did that with his creation of Jesus, now, for those who are not in truth yet, I know this may sound crazy, this may sound far-fetched, but if you do a little research, you will see for yourself that the, the name Jesus is not the name of the Mashiach, okay? First of all, there is no J in Hebrew. There's no J sound in Hebrew. So the name Jesus is created. It was created. It was created by uh, the Catholic Church, okay, to, again, bring division, okay, and, and to bring trickery and deceit. So when you see that name in Latin, it really means earth pig, okay? And it also means hail Zeus, okay? Scripture says that the Mashiach would come in his father's name. Okay, his name is Yahusha. Yahusha. Yah. Husha. Husha means deliverance. Yah is deliverance. Okay? So the word Jesus cannot mean that. It does not mean that. It means in Latin earth pig. So that is part of the deception, part of I believe the delusion that Yah allowed to come upon the earth for those who refuse to follow his truth. Okay, so there's this there is a strong delusion, okay, that keeps uh, uh, the minds of those who refuse to follow Yah's law or his light 
or his Torah, and it keeps them in a mindset that they don't have to follow truth, that they, they do not have to follow his Torah, and that they are okay. They're saved, okay, and they're going to heaven, okay? That's a whole nother subject if you want to look up what heaven is, okay? That's, that's pagan as well. And they are in this mindset that um, they are right because of the delusion. Okay, you got to understand something. Y'all placed this on them because they refuse to follow truth. Okay, so those who are disobedient are under the delusion that Jesus is Lord. They're under that delusion, okay, that Jesus is Lord. But check this out. Yahushua Hamashiach is master. So you see the duality? You see, the, see what's going on? Jesus is Lord. Yahushua Hamashiach is master. You got these two. Uh, uh, one is a deception and one is truth, but they're running neck and neck, so to speak. And you have some folks who are uh, uh, just, the, you can't, tell them that Jesus is not Lord. Now, when I say Jesus is Lord, I'm referring to who he really is, okay? Because Lord means Baal, okay? So, earth pig is Baal. But when I say Yahushua HaMashiach is master, I am speaking of the true Mashiach, the true master who will return one day for his people. So the idea of this delusion keeps those who are under it in a spell, under a spell, so to speak. Their minds are seared that their truth is truth, okay? And to them, it is true. Okay? Until Yah actually wakes them up to what is true and what is not true, that is what they will believe, okay? And I'm not bashing anybody because there is an awakening happening. Okay, I was a Christian for 40 plus years. Uh, probably three years ago, you could not have told me anything different in terms of Jesus and him being Lord. You could not have convinced me. It was not until 2015 that Yah himself woke me up. He used some people to do it, but he woke me up to his truth. Okay, so understanding that there's nothing that I can do or anyone can do to wake a person up to truth. Um, we are not bashing. We are, we are just bringing information for those who would hear, who have ears to hear. Okay, so we know that those who are, who are in truth understand that when I say Jesus is Lord, I'm referring to who he really is. And who he really is is our greatest adversary, Hashatan, okay? So that idea of that delusion um, does not affect those who are walking in truth, okay? We know that uh, there have been many deceptions, okay? There are many, many, many um, false deities who are uh, uh, disguising themselves as truth. I have some books on uh, uh, Greek goddesses and gods and, 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 and Egyptian goddesses and gods. There are thousands of them. So this is not anything new. But what makes this so significant is that Christianity is the closest thing to truth. And that's how Satan works. He takes a little bit of truth, mix it with lie, and that's where you have the deception. That's where you have the deception. He deceived Mother Eve the same way. He told her, you should not surely die. And she did not literally die as she partake of the fruit, but she did die. She eventually did die. Uh, but she, but his explanation of it, or, or the way that he, he tried to bring the information to her was to let her know that, no, you're not going to die right here now, which she did not. But what he failed to to inform her of was that now she will die because now she has corrupted herself. She defiled herself 
by disobeying the the uh, the orders of uh, commands of Yah. Okay. So Yahusha himself warned us about this delusion. Okay. Getting back to the delusion. Um, and we're going to read just a little bit. Let's turn to Yahukanan chapter 5 in verse 43. Okay. And this is the one where most Christians um, uh, will probably dispute it, but it is it is what it is. It's, it's Yah's word. It's written, and there's no dispute in the word of Yah. It is what it is. So chapter 5, verse 43, reads as thus. I have come in my father's name. So he came in his father's name, right? Yahusha. I just I just stated that uh, a little while back that Husha means deliverance. Yah, I am deliverance. So he came in his father's name, right? And you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, Jesus, him you would receive. So Someone came, okay, someone came, someone came. Where, where did all this come from? Well, you got to go back some centuries, but it, it was, it's, I'm going to put the blame on, on where it belongs, on Hashatan, but Hashatan works through men, and these men decided to create this delusion, okay, of this so-called Jesus. And as I uh, explained earlier, there's no J sound or letter J in the Hebrew alphabet. So they created this to bring about false light. Okay, that's that duality again. That's that light and dark, trying to mix the two, trying to bring the two together. So Yahushua let us know that, hey, you're not even going to receive in my name, but, but when this imposter comes, you're going to receive him. And millions of people are following the imposter, the imposter. And that is where the lawless one will be able to bring about such deception with his lying signs and wonders that a lot of people are going to be deceived. A lot of people are going to be deceived. Um, but those who are walking in truth, the light of Torah, so remember, Bereshith chapter 1, verse 3, Elohim separated the light from the darkness. Light is Torah. Torah is light, okay? When he separated the light from the darkness, that was to bring about distinction, okay? That was to bring about distinction, and it actually gave us a pathway, a pathway, a pathway. I believe that um, the... I believe it's in Telahim chapter 119. I believe it talks about light being a path for us. Let me turn to that really quickly. I believe it's Telahim chapter 119 and 105. I believe that's what it is. Let me turn to that really quickly. Yes. It says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. A lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So he gave us light for us to be able to um, follow his truth, so that we not would not be uh, caught up in the snares of Hashatan. So we would not be uh, we would not fall for this duality. We would not fall for this delusion. Okay. It's only when you refuse to follow light that you will get caught up in the delusion, okay? So those who are under the delusion prefer darkness. They prefer darkness. They prefer their ham, their pork, all these things that we're told not to eat in uh, Leviticus chapter 11. They prefer all of this stuff. They prefer to... Worship on Sunday, okay? 
They prefer the day of the sun. They prefer their Christmas trees and their Easter bunnies and all of these other things because they are under this delusion and they prefer darkness. Uh, they, they prefer these things. So let's turn again to Yehuchanan chapter 3 verses 19 through 20 and we're going to see where those who are lawless and who are under the delusion prefer to be in darkness. Okay, so again, Yehuchanan chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. And it reads as thus, and this is the judgment that the light, light, when we talked about light earlier, to Ra is light, has come into the world, and men love the darkness rather than the light, for their works were wicked. Okay? So they choose they choose darkness over light because it it hides their sins. Okay, the darkness hides their sins. Light is gonna call out your sin every time. Okay? Um, if you begin to, for those who who are just coming in truth and may not know a lot of scripture, and I'm, I don't claim to know a lot of scripture either, uh, but if you began to read Torah, that is the first five books of what is called the Old Testament, okay? You, if you begin to read those five books and start to understand the instruction of Yahuwah and begin to apply them to your life, more light will shine into your life and it's going to shine on the dark places in your life. It's going to shine on the dark places in your life. And that is where the correction comes. Okay? So if you never allow that light to shine in your dark places, guess what? You're going to continue to walk in darkness. I don't care how pretty the Christmas tree is. I don't care how pretty that ham glazed with maple syrup. I don't care how pretty that uh, that turkey you eat on Thanksgiving. I don't care how cute that little Easter basket is on Easter, Ishtar. It is dark. It is darkness. And as long as you allow that darkness to remain in your life, you will not see the need for light. Or you will run from light whenever light is presented to you. So the world would rather continue in sin with the Christmas, the Easter, eating the unclean things, all these things that we're told not to do if you read Torah, right? So what is sin? Just really quickly, sin is the transgression of Torah, okay? That's all it is. It is the transgression of Torah. It's going against Torah. So that is in, you know, if you want to turn to that, that is, I believe, this first John gives you that explanation of what sin is. And I'm not trying to simplify it, but I am trying to simplify it so that you'll understand what sin is. Okay, when I was in the Christian church, there were all kinds of uh, things that, that they said sin was. So drinking alcohol, they said was a sin. But then when I read in Matthew, Matthew Yahu, I believe it's the 26th chapter, where Yahusha said, I will not drink of this, of this wine again until I come into my reign. So that lets me know that he drank wine. So there, the Christian church's uh, um, explanation of sin is man's doctrine, Okay. There are, all, there are also other examples of things that I heard while I was in the Christian church that they said was sin, okay, particularly in the Pentecostal movement. So they, they would say things like a woman who would wear lipstick or wear a, a red dress. Now, I know that, um, you know, lipstick, in my opinion, should not be worn because these are things that were taught uh, by the fallen one, so pain in your eyes and all of that stuff, but they were talking about a woman, if, if they wore a certain color dress, that was a sin, particularly a red dress, that that was a sin, uh, and all of this other 
uh, foolishness that is not scriptural that they said was sin. And, and I guess the one that really stands out is about alcohol and that drinking is a sin. Now, we're not supposed to get drunk, but you can drink. Okay, you can drink according to scripture. You can drink. Uh, Yahusha turned water into wine at the wedding feast. Okay, so if it was a sin, why would he turn water into wine? It makes no sense. Okay, so we've been taught a lot of man's doctrine in terms of what sin is. But sin is transgression of Torah. That's what it is. It's transgression of Yah's instructions to his people. Okay, so again, Jesus is Lord and he is Lord because Lord is Baal. Okay, so he is the false light. Yahusha Hamashiach is the true light. Okay, and it's only when you accept the light of Torah, the true light, that you are able to be guided away from the delusion that Yah has placed those who are disobedient unto him under. So I pray that you were able to get something out of this message that Yah has given me. And I pray that uh, Yah will allow me to come back again and to bring more of his truth um, so that someone will be able to live um, I'm, I'm thankful because Yah called me out of the darkness, out of the delusion in 2015, and he has allowed me to grow in his truth um, through compassion. He, he showed compassion to me, and he allows me and allowed me to uh, come out of the delusion and to uh, walk in light, walk in truth. I'm still learning. I'm still growing. Um, but I'm thankful nonetheless, nonetheless that he did call me out. Um, so again, understanding the, understanding the delusion um, is understanding that those who are walking in darkness, um, first of all, they cannot come out of the delusion on their own. Yah has to bring them out of the delusion. But if you are walking in Yah's truth and in his light, he's called you out of darkness um, have a little patience with those who are still struggling, okay, who are still dealing with what has been seared in their minds, okay, and pray for them, pray for them. Uh, scripture says that um, Yah desires that none should perish. So we know that the desire of the Father is that all would come to repentance. Um, so just like he called us out of darkness, he can call anyone else out of darkness. So let's not be judgmental in that sense and let us pray for them. But still, we should help them. We should show them uh, as Yah leads, you know, um, their ways. Expose the enemy. Okay? Put him out there. Let let at least allow them to know. And you know, when Yah called me out of darkness, there were things that um, did not really trigger a response, but then there were things that did trigger a response for me. And as I, you know, as I start to come out of that fog, that's what I call it, really a fog, you know, as Yah was awakening me, then certain things just made sense to me. So, you know, in love, show them the error of their ways, okay? Um, but be a little sensitive to know that Yah has to wake them up. You can't do a thing but to be, you know, uh, a messenger and to to let them know what truth is. Uh, so, again, um, we are uh, thankful. We are um, excited about what Yah is doing. We know that the awakening means that we're getting close to the end of this age and the, the, the reign of Yahusha is coming. It's coming. And I'm thankful that he is awakening his people uh, to his truth so that we can walk in his light. So that we may, be, we may be, be able to stand and see him in shalom. So again, um, I thank you for listening and ask that you will pray for me that Yah will continue to use me um, to help his people. All right, shalom.